It's Toronto's podcast on the Canada's Podcast Network. Today, I'd like you to introduce you to Emily May Feely, who began teaching piano in Waterloo four years ago to earn cash on the side. She went on to develop a web-based business called Feely Piano School that lets you book a piano teacher to come to your home. In 2014, Emily May founded Feely Piano School, which has been called the Uber of music lessons. Since then, it has grown from a small startup to a three-province, ten-city enterprise. Currently, Feely, a self-taught entrepreneur, is associated with three incubators at the U of T in Mississauga, Sheridan College, and Carleton University, which are helping to support her journey. Lately, she's been focusing on the business side of the company and is no longer teaching. With over 10 cities in Alberta, Ontario, and Nova Scotia, Philly Piano School is very much on the grow. Welcome, Emily May. So, welcome, Emily. Why don't you tell us a little bit more about yourself, you know, where you're from, give us the details on your current business, and, uh, you know, we'll, we'll take it from there. Well, first, I just really wanted to say thanks, Phil, for having me. Um, it's really nice to be able to share my story with others. Um, so I'm 26. I'm from Brantford, Ontario, which is a small city just past Hamilton, which is just past Toronto. <laughs> and I've been running my business since 2014. And um, yeah. Okay. Okay. In terms of, you know, can you tell us a little bit more about, about I mean, I, I did a description of, of the school, but can you tell us a bit more about the school? And more importantly, you know, Tell us a bit about the stop moment, you know, when you said, I'm going to become an entrepreneur and the first thing I'm going to do is open this piano school. And I'm, I'm interested to know that. Yeah, it's a really interesting story how we got here. Um, I, I'm the founder of Feely Piano School, so we hire music teachers that drive to your home and teach you on your instrument. There's lots of good reasons why, and it'll, I guess, come a little bit later. But the, the aha moment, I guess, for me was, I was in university and I was in my fourth year of studies and I had to take a business course. And um, for this business course, I had to make a website for myself as if I was going to be a studio teacher. And I had to make a website and a couple of other things. And so when I graduated, I kind of said, well, like, what the heck? I'll just put the website online. I'll pay for it. I wasn't paid at this point. And I just said, okay, well, let's just see what happens if I press click and pay for the website. It was not planned at all. And so... Um, upon graduating, I had to get a job, so I did that, and then I started putting out a couple of ads on, on Kijiji, and at the same time, I was dating someone in another city, and I was trying to figure out how I was going to get him, so uh, buying a car seemed to make sense, but I needed to be able to afford it, so um, I kind of made a connection between maybe I should go teach lessons in his city while I go there and make some side cash to make it <laughs> fine to visit him, and yeah. Naturally, he didn't have a piano at his place. I started seeing where other pianos existed, and that was in the homes of others, and then it just started. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah. You know, but why an entrepreneur? I mean, why not go on and teach music in the, the traditional way, uh, which is sort of entrepreneurial, but this is, this is very different. I mean, how did you come about, you know, starting an online business. I mean, in my description, it says, you know, and I, I took that from, from an article, you know, that, that you're, you're currently, you know, the, the Uber of music lessons. I mean, you know. Well, what happened, Phil, is it, it kind of just exploded. I, I began to be in demand in a lot of different cities. And because I started justifying anywhere I wanted to go with finding a student in that city. So, you know, I want to go back and visit Toronto and, is my friends there? And um, okay, well, I'll find a couple of students and then I'll have to go every week to see them. So this Uber system kind of happened organically, but then what happened over time is it became way too much to manage, um, you know, taking payments from cities and managing everything. So then it was, it was just a business decision to go online and then a business decision to start to hire. So uh, like all of it became organic. And even to this day, I'm learning because I'm not, uh, I'm not, trained in business I'm not trained in tech but uh, the tech elements are kind of on a need to happen basis just because <laughs> the is so unpredictable mm -hmm. and um, so now yesterday I was in a, a meeting with my marketing team and it was interesting to identify my new role it is digital marketing it is entrepreneur it's not a music teacher anymore um, so the business has taken quite a shift to be online 
now we're managing I'm managing software systems, um, designing a new website, you know, forecasting what trends are coming in the future with technology, how we can work with technology to make music interesting um, still. What about, what about the financing? You know, I think lots of people might think about being an entrepreneur and might have ideas, but they're really unsure uh, uh, of how to get in the game. I mean, you know, if it needs money, especially how to get in the game. I mean, did you have to find financing, find the investment? How, how, did, how did it happen? So the company is all bootstrapped, which is a term that means it's self-funded by myself. And mm-hmm. uh, I think there's a lot of entrepreneurs or people who would like to be entrepreneurs out there that believe it take a lot of, it takes a lot of money. And in my, in my experience and in the experience of many of my friends, we've noticed it doesn't actually take a lot of money. It just takes a lot of knowledge on how to use things for free. Mm -hmm. So for instance, I made up, I, everyone in the office knows me as the girl who made a hundred thousand off a Wix website. So Mm -hmm. Wix websites cost you, it's about a hundred dollars for the year subscription. You can even work with a lot of products online for free. Uh, I use Kijiji a lot. I used Mm -hmm. as self knowledge as I could. I'm self taught on a lot of, SEO, which is, you know, bringing your website up in a high Google ranking. So luckily I've been able to leverage a lot of free resources just with my own knowledge. And um, so I haven't, I haven't had to raise funds. I know that's something that a lot of entrepreneurs consider. I've been offered to have some funds invested in my company. That's Mm -hmm. a different story, but I think, I think the takeaway is maybe it doesn't cost as much as most entrepreneurs think it does. It just takes creativity and a lot of Googling, to be honest. I think all entrepreneurs are just professional Googlers. <laughs> so what, is a typical, what does a typical day look like for Emily? You know, how do you maintain the kind of focus it needs to succeed? Uh, you know, when you get up, I mean, what do you do first thing in the morning? That kind of thing. Yeah, it is a very bizarre lifestyle. Uh, <laughs> my typical day looks like get up around 5, 5, well, 5.36, I would say. Yeah. I just naturally wake up at that time. I've been a very morning energetic person. So um, I've got some some daily lists that I do for myself. They're gratitude lists. And I've got about five different things that I consider just to get my mind started. Um, and then I usually work on the computer from about 6.30 to about 8. I'm um, doing online maintenance and then... The rest of my day looks like an hour of intense focus and then a small 20 minute break and an hour of intense focus and 20 minutes break. Um, And about till six o'clock and then I try to get some physical activity in and then I try to rest at the night. But I think um, if you were gonna summarize that in a more, um, very organized, very, but spontaneous at the same time and very focused with a lot of breaks. (laughs) So what is your business model? You know, I mean, what's your long-term vision for the school? So right now we offer only piano lessons because we want to do one thing really well. Mm -hmm. um, Within that, we'd like to be throughout Canada um, within a couple of years. Right now the business model is just being redone. I'm taking time off of teaching full-time so that I can work on the business full-time. So I've redone all the internal organs and Mm -hmm. um, designed new software to make the booking process more easier. Um, so within a couple of years, we would like to be um, the number one piano providing school in Canada. And then we will introduce other instruments into the platform as well. And then um, we're looking at diff- different kind of ways to make music education new with technology. Mm-hmm. And um, I can't really release too much about that right now. But yeah, Understood, understood, yeah. Uh, okay, okay, but you're, you're, you're pretty... You're, you're pr- yeah, you, you do have a long-term vision. So we have a five-year and a two-year goal for sure. Are you going to stay in Canada or you do you see yourself going it's North funny. America, global, what the heck, I don't know. You know? I, I don't. I know that I want to take over com- uh, Canada. I'm not sure if I'm, I'm not sure yet. It's a little bit too far out there. Um, but I was recently offered um, an opportunity to expand a portion of the business in India. So, um, that is actually its own business of its own. It's a music education app for the mm-hmm. music school. Um, but that mm-hmm. is something that could launch globally. And so I've been offered investment for that. So as far as myself and my entrepreneurship goals, I think that music app might be one that launches throughout the world. Okay. Or Philly Piano School. Okay. 
what are the biggest benefits of being an entrepreneur, not in Toronto so much as southwestern Ontario, which is really where you hang out, basically? I mean, you, you're never very far away from Toronto. None of us are in southwestern Ontario. Mm -hmm. So what are, the, what are the boundaries within Ontario itself? Um, I think it's becoming more common to find women entrepreneurs, mm -hmm. but being a woman entrepreneur is a little bit isolating and also being a solo entrepreneur is a little bit isolating. So a lot of my business is external, um, external employees and staffing. So we have almost 30 music teachers right now and they're all in different cities. Mm -hmm. And so Typical day of my work looks like getting up and designing stuff by myself and then mm -hmm. going to work and sitting at a table by myself, dreaming myself and then implementing all myself. So um, I think, I don't know if other parts of the world have women, um, like a, as many women entrepreneurs, um, but I think in general, that's something that's a little, a little bit unbalanced and not for any reason. It's just, it's just what I'm finding right now. It's pretty, unbal it's pretty unbalanced here still as well. I mean, it's, yeah. it's, 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 there's more, but not enough. Kind of so, uh, yeah. We do some of the best work outside the office, even though you work like heck, like most entrepreneurs. Whereabouts around here do you like to go to recharge, to get inspired, you know, just to think? Mm, that's a really good question. I find that I've, I have my inspiration moments in art and mm -hmm. in physical exercise. So um, I love going to art museums and art galleries. I love the AGO mm -hmm. and the Mississauga is just a couple of way, a couple of blocks away from the Mississauga art gallery. Mm -hmm. So seeing art is very, um, very good for me. I get very, very creative when I see art. And as far as physical activities, I love to do physical activities outside. I love to run in different places. Mm -hmm. allows me to to create so uh, the waterfront in Toronto is one of my favorite places to go and run and um, yeah okay. so do you think entrepreneurs have to be weird unique are we wired differently I mean what do you think I mean I I, I never quite know yeah uh, I I definitely think we're a unique breed. I do a lot of research on entrepreneurs. I'm just reading the Steve Job books right now. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Job book, and it's so interesting reading about who he is because I see so much of myself, and it's a very interesting person. Um, what do you think? Well, I, I think we're a bit different. You know, I mean, uh, I mean, you know, I started life in one with one of the big companies with GM actually, and and that wasn't going to be my life. So you know. That's, I hear a lot of entrepreneurs say the same thing. They, yeah. generally, they generally have a perfectly good career, and yeah. but it's not not for them, you know. So the, there is, I think there is a bit, I like the wired differently. That's, I wrote that question, so I think we are wired a bit differently, to be honest about it. You know, I, I, don't think there's, I don't think there's much you can do about us, you know. I have to yeah. agree. And I, I sometimes feel like it's, again, a little bit of an isolation thing, but I almost ride it some days too. Like, you know what, it's, it's a cool lifestyle. I, I don't know many people that live like this. Yeah, yeah, it's cool or not, depending if you're an entrepreneur. I think. Anyway, you 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 said you're re reading Steve Jobs' uh, um, bio biography. Any other books? You know, I like to always recommend books or audio books or whatever <coughs> that can inspire entrepreneurs. You know? Me too. What's that one podcast? It's so good. Oh, the Tim Ferriss podcast, Tribe of Mentors. <coughs> mm -hmm. My favorite question in their podcast. Um, oh man, there's so many good ones. Um, you know, I've read a lot of the self-help books, um, power of happiness, power of now. They're great. Um, the monk who, what is that called? The monk who sold his Ferrari. That oh, one's a good right. one. Right. You know what I really like too? Actually, maybe my number one recommendation is Norman Doidge, the brain's way of healing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm analysis on the brain and how you can use the brain to physically heal yourself and it's a book of little miracles um, just gives you you know confidence in the ability that your brain has okay. when, it, when you think something you can achieve it so I, that's probably my number one okay so if you weren't doing what you're doing now 
what would you like to do for a profession? Hmm. <laughs> what, I, what would I do for another profession or what's the next business I would open? Uh, <laughs> no, more of a profession, I, you know. Yeah. Because uh, if you open another business, you're just being an entrepreneur. Oh, I like, know. Like, you, know. you know what? It's a hard. I think. Um, I think this answers your questions. I would love to do something software engineering. Like I would love to learn the language of coding. I love learning languages. Mm -hmm. and I love to just create things. Um, so that doesn't necessarily have to be an entrepreneurship role. But I mean, you are creating still. But I would love to learn how to do software. Um, software and software. What job wouldn't you like to do? Oh, um, I would not like to be a front desk office administrator. <laughs> and I think that is because I just don't care. I'm not too good with dealing with at face value concerns. Okay. <laughs> well, it's not that I'm not good at that. It's just. Okay. Very so, so, you know, in business, What's your favorite word, you know, or sentence, or, you know, what, what do you most like to use? Mm, let's do it. Let's do it, okay. Yeah. What's your, what's your least favorite word or sentence? Um, well, that's a good question, too. What's my least favorite? Uh, I quit. Definitely. Okay. Okay. Somebody, somebody quits, that's a hard one. Yeah. Same kind of thing with the words. If you had to pick one or two, two words to describe yourself, what would they be? I would say um, optimistic and energetic. Sure. Yeah, I know, I know I get told I just don't quit. I'm, yep. I'm very driven. That's so, a very good so one too. That's the best word to describe me. You know, I think yeah. just, just keep driving. What keeps you up at night? Yeah. If anything, well, if anything, I mean, maybe nothing keeps you up at night. Hmm. You know what? <laughs> Usually at the end of the night, I'm, I hit my head on the pillow <laughs> pretty well. Um, but um, I live, I live in a condo and I'm on the 35th floor. Uh -huh. uh, I actually prefer sleeping on the ground with my mattress and step in a bed. And uh -huh. it puts me right at the level that I can see all the cars going by on the highway. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I I can just stare out the window all night at that. If that, yeah, that can keep me up at night. Is I think it's nice to just see you know other little lives out there. They're just like me. Neat. Give me the top two or three things on what I term your inspired life list. Those things that make you go. You kind of discuss. We're talking about art. That kind of that might oh. be one of them. That kind of thing. I don't know if you've uh, ever heard of the uh, rainbow eucalyptus tree, but I love trees and nature. It's just, I could be in nature all day. Mm -hmm. And it's just one tree and it's in Papua New Guinea and it's in Hawaii. And I just think it's the most beautiful thing. It's, it's highlighter colored when it, when it sheds its bark, it goes to rainbow coloring and it's, it's on my bucket list this year to see. And it's mm -hmm. very, very, very tall as well. It's just like one of nature's like, beautiful but bizarre things like think about it it's like highlighter color yeah. um, so that nature just kind of blows my mind you know you can look at the roots of a tree and it can be huge um, and one other thing that just blows my mind um, hmm. I'd love to see a solar eclipse have you ever seen a solar eclipse no I have not no. I heard this amazing TED talk on solar eclipse and it's just yeah. talking about the experience of seeing it and mm -hmm. I would like to see a, a um, solar eclipse. Cool. Yeah. Okay. So this is, a, I asked everybody this. Okay. Seeing as you haven't listened yet, you know, you don't know it's coming. Okay. There's a small tropical island just off Fiji that has only one phone booth and no internet. You drop you off there, you don't have a computer or a smartphone or a tablet. You can use the phone booth located there anytime to call the boat and we'll come and pick you up. How long would you last before you made that call? And what would you do there while you were there? Oh my gosh, that sounds like heaven. <laughs> 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 yeah. I, 
I love the moment my cell phone dies. I love the moment. I don't have Wi-Fi in my condo. I just love being distanced from it all. Mm -hmm. So what would I do there? Um, the first thing I would do is probably create some really cool art in the sand. Mm -hmm. uh, I could just draw designs in the sand all day. Um, mm -hmm. I would love to swim. Um, I would love to climb the trees. Uh, you know, I would love to go pick the flowers. I would love to bathe in the heat. I don't know if I'd ever pick up that phone call. I'd be like, <laughs> come on, Em, let's go. I I love nature. I could, you know, meditate That's on it all day. Good. I, I, I can empathize with that for sure. Yeah. So, the, coming to the end now, is there, you know, and I love it because you're, you're, you're a new entrepreneur. In, in the, the, the time that you've been there, is there any advice that you may have received that you want to pass on to others, you know, because this is a, this is these programs are it's a national network. Mm. We we kind of like to yeah you know, for to sure learn, to learn from from the people we're interviewing. Yeah, I do a lot of coaching with entrepreneurs, and because I am younger, they're even younger than me, and most of the time the entrepreneurs I speak with just don't have the understanding of what to do next, and so. I, I always tell them just um, when you have an idea and you're wondering what to do next, start something online. Just start something today. And mm -hmm. if you can just start um, something today, then, you know, you're already making better for tomorrow. So um, sometimes, you know, starting something today looks like buying a website, looks like writing your business plan with the business model canvas, um, or, you know, even just starting a Facebook page. I would say one of those three things you can do in a day. And usually that will give you just the seed that, is needed to start. I would also suggest getting comfortable with your local entrepreneurship centers. I know I have three different incubators that I'm affiliated with. Mm -hmm. um, so there, you know, be be knowledgeable of the resources around you, and people will help you if you know to go to them. So, um, okay. yeah, yeah. It's so, how can our listeners get a hold of you? If there's anything they'd like to talk to you about, you know, uh, just give us some kind of comp contact detail today i'm a serial entrepreneur i've started a few different companies so i'm always really happy to you know show my ideas and um, share them with others you can contact me personally in my email um that's e-m-i-l-e-e-m-a-e -E -E dot feely dot one one two at gmail dot com you can find me on linkedin it's emily feely uh you can type feely piano school in google and you'll find me um, i'm really happy to help anyone who has questions Okay. Well, Emily, really glad to meet you. We've kind of missed each other a few times, and it's yeah. been, been, been a lot of fun. And uh, uh, I, I love music, so keep, keep the piano. I wish I had a piano here. I would play something for you. It's a little cooking. outro. But keep, keep it cooking. It's okay. you too, Phil. All right. Okay. You, you take care. Okay. Thank you. Thank you.